Hey, good morning. How are you today? Hey, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining us, as always, here on the South Jersey Sports Report. Uh, before we get started on some baseball, I wanted to, to talk a little bit of football, get get some of your thoughts real quick. Uh, we, we just spoke to Mike McGarry about this and, and the whole uh, the whole non-public uh, scheduling flap. I know there's some teams in North Jersey that aren't too fond of uh, being on the schedule along with teams you know, such as Bergen Catholic, Bosco, and St. Peter's Prep. So some of these other non-publics are trying they're, – they're almost kind of trying to pick and choose their own schedule. You know, Do you see any of this working itself out? Um, you know, it's it's been such an issue for such a long time. You know, teams don't want to play certain teams. And, you know, the North has always wanted to do what the North wanted to do. Um, and now all of a sudden, they don't even want to play the teams in the North. So, uh, you know, it, to be quite honest with you, I really think it's a North Jersey problem. And, and it's something that they're going to have to iron out. And, you know, uh, leave just basically at this point, leave South Jersey out of it and, right. and let them deal with it. And, and uh, you know, will it get solved? Um, probably, but guaranteed that uh, somebody's not going to be asked. <laughs> As usual, right? What, what about the recruiting process? We just had uh, Owen Bowles from Cedar Creek on early in the show, and uh, you know, Press did a, did a cool article about uh, Bo Melton kind of trying to to uh, maybe co- convince some of these New Jersey guys to stay in state and try to build up Rutgers a little bit. And what's your take on the recruiting process these days? It, it's so much different than even a couple years ago with with all the social media and and these guys signing early and then trying to convince some other guys to join them at certain schools. It's kind of interesting how it, how it's kind of played out the last couple of years. Yeah, obviously, like you said, it's changed dramatically, and uh, social media obviously, I think, is the biggest reason why. You know, uh, you can communicate with with kids across the country, you know, instantaneously, and you know, uh, these kids know who the, the 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 best players around. They know each other. You know, they they may not have met physically, you know, face to face, but they know each other. They know what they're capable of. They know who they're. Be- who they're being recruited by, and um, you know they're 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 doing their best selling pitch to kind of go together to you know to any any number of schools, and you know uh, I think uh, you know the, the early signing and all. I'm I'm really not a, a huge fan of that because I think a lot of kids a lot of kids will will see an offer and and take an offer and really not do. St- uh, I guess maybe a, a really a whole lot of homework, you know, they know the reputation of a certain school. Um, and then, then, you know, they jump on that, but you know, the fact that you can, it's only a verbal commitment, you know, obviously leaves the door open for change. But when you have kids, not that I'm saying Bo Melton is going to change his mind, but when you have kids that make a commitment and then become so enamored with the school in which they've made a commitment to, you know, there's still a chance Bo Melton doesn't go to Rutgers, even though, you know, all the talk, and, and, and I would probably say, you know, 99% of it, uh, of it is evil. But, you know, it's it's a non-binding verbal commitment. You know, what if someone else comes comes along with an offer that's just a little bit better? So, you know, that's that's an opportunity that's still there. So I think in that aspect of things, you know, I'm not a big fan of the early, early commitment type of thing, but obviously, you know, through social media, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, fans of certain schools can they, they 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 watch for this, they look for this, and and uh, you know it's obviously it's blown it's blown up. How, how much more work do you have to do as a reporter? Uh, you know, obviously there, there's high interest in some of these kids. You know, high school football carries the day uh, in in terms of high school sports. And uh, do you find yourself kind of? Uh, you know, maybe not even consciously, but just scrolling through Twitter a lot more and trying to find out more about these kids. And you know, how how much has that changed your job? Well, you know, uh, from my perspective, you know, I'll look at Twitter and and I'll uh, and I'll see, you know, if a kid makes a kid if a kid you know makes a post that you know he received this offer or that offer, you know, we can retweet that and maybe maybe quote out something about you know localize it a little bit more. Um, but as far as you know producing stories and things like that it's it's completely out of control at this point to do stuff like that <laughs> yeah. you know uh, you, you could write a story about it you know in the back you know you go back i don't know maybe five years ago if a kid got an offer from penn state or a kid got an offer from a, a you know a big time school maybe you'd, you'd, you'd write a little something but now this is an everyday kind of thing and and you know there's there's really there's really no hard story out there yet until this kid puts his name on the piece of paper, and then it becomes a story because there's just so many out there. You know, when you have kids, 25, 30 offers, you know, 
you're not, it, you're not writing this story 25 or 30 times. It's just not going to happen. Right, right. Uh, we're talking to Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Uh, Kevin, let's talk a little high school baseball. Some really interesting things going on in South Jersey. Uh, obviously, the Cape Atlantic League, very bunched up. Uh, but also, you're starting to see some things, uh, some interesting things in the Tri County. You know, Wildwood and Pennsville kind of hanging around there, and Delcy really rising to the top in the Tri County Diamond, uh, Tri County Royal, really interesting division. Uh, Kingsway, Clearview, Williamstown, they're all kind of up there near the top. I mean, Williamstown's in third place in that conference, and they're you know top 15 in the state. Yeah, well, uh, as far as the state rankings are concerned, I put no credence in them whatsoever, and I've told every coach that I've talked to about that. You know, coaches will say, oh, well, we're ranked this in the state, we're ranked that in the state. To be quite honest with you, people are, you know, a little too fascinated with, with state rankings. Uh, and to be honest, again, there's no way you can do a state ranking because these guys don't see all the teams up and down this state. And that's something that is a pet peeve of mine, and, and I'll stick behind it. State rankings, to me, right now in baseball, are a joke. Complete joke. But... As far as the Tri County Conference is concerned, you know you look at you got three teams: you got Clearview, you got Kingsway, you got Williamstown, and they're all going to battle it. They're going to battle it right until right until the end because it is so close. And a team like Delphi in the Diamond is having a, a real nice season. And then you go to the you know in the in the Classic right now, you know Pennzoil and Wildwood are going to are going to uh, you know battle it out you know, until the end. But then again, Gloucester Catholic hasn't played its. It's classic division games for the most point, you know, most part yet. So I think you know at the end, Gloucester Catholic's probably going to be the team that's going to rise out of that. But you know, until they get those games in, you know, they're kind of you know on the, on the shoulder, I guess, a little bit. But you know, South Jersey baseball, if we can finally, you know, there's teams out there that have already played uh, the minimum or their their maximum number of games towards the state tournament, which is 15. You know, I got teams that have played 15, 16, 18 games already. Then you got other teams that have played nine and nine and ten and eleven games because of this weather. So, right. you know, I think uh, you know a lot of teams have backloaded their schedule. Um, a lot of teams will have their schedule backloaded simply because of the weather at this point. So, the next uh, what the next I guess three weeks or so, uh, weather permitting, obviously, because that seems to be the, the key two words every day. Um, you know, is going to come is going to there's going to be baseball games every day. You know, down the stretch, and and coaches are going to have to, you know, they're going to have to worry about their pitching, and they're going to have to match up their rotation, and then, uh, you know, you throw in a couple of other events, a couple of mini tournaments here or there, especially you throw in the uh, the Diamond Classic, which is going to start next weekend, and uh, you know, this this last uh, stretch before the tournament, uh, the, the state tournament is really going to be uh, an interesting uh, couple of weeks. Kevin, tell us a little bit about a, a couple teams that popped up on my radar. I spend most of my time covering Cape Atlantic League teams, uh, but a, a couple teams that jumped out at me are, are West Deptford and uh, Haddon Heights. Haddon Heights really having a nice season, ten and four overall, uh, nine and one in the uh, Colonial Patriot. And uh, West Deptford always one of those teams in South Jersey Group Two. You got to watch out for. Yeah, you look at West Deptford. You know, uh, this year they've kind of uh, they're off to a great start. They've got a couple of uh, a couple of college kids. Uh, playing uh, pretty pretty well right now and the thing with West Deptford is right now you know they they lost to Haddonfield uh, I believe it was yesterday or today must must have been on Thursday and uh, that's a tight race right now Haddonfield's only a game a game behind them so you know in that division Haddonfield is, is right on West Deptford's heels and then you look on the other side uh, you know Heights owns that division um, right now it's they're they're clearly I think I think they're up three games at this point um, I think that's probably close to being done. Um, the thing with Haddon Heights is when Adam Lasky is on the mound, uh, you know, they are extremely difficult to beat. Adam's uh, heading to Duke, but he's a left-hander. Um, drawing, he's another one that's drawing some uh, some significant uh, attention from some major league scouts. You know, I think uh, I think he's a, there's the chance that he will get drafted. Um, I think he's probably a, a, a late round, middle to late rounds. Um, he is that good. But um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it would take for them to sign over uh, a Duke education and the opportunity to play in the ACC. So that's something that you know, obviously, you have to look at come come the draft in June and and moving forward. But you know, there's two teams right there. You know, yeah, they're having uh, they're having very good seasons, and um, obviously, I think Haddon Heights is a better baseball team when Adam Lasky pitches. I'll tell you what, Kevin, the next couple of weeks, like you mentioned, is going to be really busy in South Jersey high school baseball. And uh, 
you know, give these coaches credit. They they have a tough job coming up in terms of uh, setting up their pitching rotation, especially these teams that do make the diamond. Uh, you know, you're talking about uh, a game next week, then the following weekend, you, you got to win three to win that, and and that's right before the the state tournament. So it, it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of jockeying with lineups going on with some of these teams. And um, you know, talk about that just real quick about about how tough it is as a high school baseball coach to to kind of make it through to the end of May, where you actually have a chance and, and are able to set up your pitching rotation for the state tournament. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's the most important thing. You've got to be able to have your your best arms ready to go, and, and you can't overuse a kid either. Um, you know, going to the diamond, to win the diamond, you've got to win four games, and, and the biggest thing is you've got to win three games in two days. So uh, with the state tournament starting um, the day after the diamond final for public schools, you know, you have to really look at how important the diamond is to you and, uh, you know, what your, what your pitching, what, what your matchups are looking like in the first round of the, of the state tournament. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation. And, and those teams that have some depth at pitching are obviously, you know, at an advantage. And, uh, you know, it's always been that way. But, um, you know, I, I think uh, to, to, to win the diamond is a, is a huge deal. To win the diamond means you've, you've beaten the best teams in South Jersey. Um, you've, you've proven that you, you, can, you can play, you know, three games on, on a weekend and, and win three games. And, and uh, you know, then you go into the state tournament. So, it's a uh, it's a challenge, and and I think uh, there are coaches out there that are that are thinking about it, and they're 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 right now thinking how they're going to be able, you know, if we get this far, what we can do, and and uh, you know, it's it's all part of the job as being a coach, but I would think it's an exciting part of the job at this point in time. Yeah, definitely going to be some sleepless nights for coaches uh, the next two weeks. Uh, thanks a lot, Kevin. Appreciate your insight as always, and uh, enjoy your enjoy your weekend. Hey, if, it, uh, if the sun comes out, we'll be good. We'll be good. Good stuff, man. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that was Kevin Minnick, the Courier Post. Uh, always gives us some great insight 